Hello and welcome to The Future of Photography. I'm Chris, there's Ema, there's Adrian, and there's Jeremiah. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, everybody. Hello, doing it's, fine, thank you. It's cold outside. Still, still walking and talking. Not that talking cold, right Chris. now, not walking much. <laughs> it's, it's cold here, it's cold here. It's also dark most of the time now. Yeah, yeah. Sunset no. today was five to four in the afternoon. Oh, stop, I know. Uh, <laughs> but it's getting close to the to, to that one almost special there. day where it uh, moves there. backwards yeah. again. So, yeah. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, Imar, I don't have your name on it, hold on. Click, there we go. Hey. Mm. Yeah, here, here <laughs> uh, it's gone down into the high 60s. Oh, that must be terrible for you. <laughs> so no, don't, 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 don't tell me you have to wear a light jacket at this time. <laughs> I've been known to, yeah. <laughs> it's not quite freezing and I'm taking this hat off because otherwise I'll melt in here. <laughs> no, I'm it was a lovely hat, though, hat for, the, for, for those listening on audio. What, how would you do that's your, That's your Russian that's you a, know, that's, to that's, tundra hat. That's, that's my Russian hat, which I bought at a touristy kind of hmm. mall shop outside in in Moscow, one of the weirdest places I've ever been to. And mm -hmm. I ended up, uh, I actually ended up using this in Siberia because it was cold. And but now in, well, indoors, you know, it's not meant for indoors. If you go, if you go to Siberia, you do need a hat with furry ear flaps. <laughs> it does help. It does help, especially when you're out <laughs> on a frozen lake and the wind is, mm -hmm. uh, is blowing. So we are back with another video episode in where we, where we are back in our bubbles and um imar is in her christmas <sighs> bubble christmas I'm bubble so i hate the way you out. say bubble I'm the bubble so, has I'm... a really loaded meaning in the uk these days <laughs> does it here too yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's all Everywhere. about social control and oh, social that's... distancing Bu bubble is a is a thing that makes Our everybody shiver. far yeah. enough apart but you know yeah. the <laughs> difference is that in here we are all in each all in our own bubbles we're not sharing mm. those with anyone <laughs> Yes, not, true. not sure if that's a good thing, but well, you know, our us are our artistic types, so we're delicate flowers, aren't we? We need a bubble each. Happy in my own bubble. <laughs> totally. Okay, but, so um, but Imar, Imar, I think gets the prize today for the best set building. I mean, it's just oh, totally, totally wins the Christmas set prize. Yes, totally. Excellent, Imar. Very, very proud of my tree. Also, the, yeah. the ghoulish blue light. Uh, is also really cool. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where that comes <laughs> oh, from. Oh, it does a nice contrast to the warm light in the background. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Why not? Um, so today is uh, another one of these episodes where we went out to take photos. I don't think did we announce it here on the show? I don't think we did. It was just no. something that we did don't behind the scenes. So. We decided mm -hmm. that uh, that was so much fun doing doing uh, photography and then. And then ripping each other's photography to shreds. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we photography. Like, what a, <laughs> no, no, what a no. concept that we take no. pictures to. Yeah, yeah. So. I know it's a, it's a photography podcast where people actually take photographs, which I think makes us possibly... Occasionally, occasionally. You do. are occasionally. right. There are so many photography podcasts that don't show photography. So um, we're eating our own dog food here. So we we, yeah. we are yes, which yes. is which is good fun and uh yeah you know, it's been good taking going out there. I mean for those those in the Discord actually this is a really good plug for the for the di for the TFOP Discord isn't it because we've been showing some of these images and we've been talking about what we're doing and you know it's uh, and, and inter interacting engaging with all the people there um and it's uh, it's good fun but uh, but those of you just listening to the podcast well surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so Adrian, you made the suggestion. Uh, why don't you um, I tell, did. tell us this, what, this what, what made you think of that? So, so, so it's um, yeah. Once upon a time, right? This is a, this is what in the UK we would call a Jack and Ori moment, but that probably doesn't travel very far. But no idea what you mean. Once upon a time, I get it. Jack, yeah, <laughs> uh, Jack and Ori was a children's uh, story time program uh, on the television in the UK in the eighties. Broadly speaking, but they so, brought it back uh, on CBBS, you know. Did did they? Oh, yeah. but and and it also uh, it's also uh, has its place these days in Cockney rhyming slang as well. But anyway, 
it's a story. It's story time. It's story time. Once upon a time, once upon a time, I was at work and I saw that one of my colleagues had, you know, you know the little headshot avatars that you put in for Twitter or Instagram or Discord mm-hmm. or Teams or Zoom or whatever. Yeah, you, you, a bit like we are in our bubbles here on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, a, a colleague of mine had one of those, and it was just him, black and white, nicely lit, black background. Um, and then a short while later, as we all know, I got a new phone uh, and I started playing with it. And I thought, ah, that's how my colleague made his shot. He was using his phone, his iPhone, and he had taken a portrait mode shot and he'd used the setting that is called stage light mono, which basically puts your shot in black and white. And then anything that's not you, it just blacks out as a background. And I thought that's really clever. And that got me thinking about headshots and the future of headshots and what they're used for, how we make them, you know, all sorts of stuff. And that's what I'd like to talk to about today. And in preparation for that, we've all been taking some headshots and just, I don't know, acquainting or we're reacquainting ourselves with the practice of headshots. I just wanted to talk about how making headshots has changed, how people use headshots has changed, especially how cultural changes in 2020 have have made a big difference, possibly in the corporate world, certainly in my corporate world. uh, It's uh, it's made a big difference uh, this year of 2020. So that's it, really. And we got some photos to show as well, I guess. Right. I guess so, it's kind of uh, sorry, Chris. You want... go ahead, Jeremiah. Um, it, I'm sure there's a difference in headshot sensibilities in the corporate world versus uh, mm. headshots in the educational world versus headshots in the media world here, like the movie world, actors, etc. Mm-hmm. How headshot yes. headshots here in LA or in Hollywood um, was pretty much of an industry. A small one, as it were, of mm. get your headshots taken. And I'm, I, I'm no expert, um, but I'm. I wonder how the advent of the iPhones portrait mode and selfies have affected that. That I do not know. Well, it's really. I think it's really interesting because I. It's caused me to dive in and play with some of these tools and 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 toys, of course, tools and toys um, that we have available to us now. And uh, yeah, you can do some. Yeah, it's quite amazing what you can do that five years ago you you could only dream of, right? Mm. To have to to do a headshot, cut it out, put it on a black background, and light it nicely. Mm. Five years ago, that would have been quite a big job. <laughs> hey, now, do you think people were actually dreaming about that? Do the people? Do... <laughs> you know, you know. I remember. I, um. I remember even as a kid when I had my first passport and um, something that here in Europe everyone kind of does. And um, I had to go to a photographer and then they took a shot and that was it. And I had no say in the photo whatsoever. And then over the years, they ended up getting a digital kind of system where they had a screen and it was a CRT, not a flat screen, but a CRT next to the camera. So the photographer took a shot and I looked at it on the screen straight away, which was years before I had a digital camera in my hands. Mm. And it was... I had like two or three tries. I mean, I couldn't go on for 10 minutes, but he was like, yeah, is that okay? Is that okay? Okay. Okay. So I had a bit of a say. And um, I think people enjoy the fact that they can now control the narrative, that they can kind of present themselves in the best light with Mm. their headshots by just um, using the tools they have and doing them themselves. That's a really interesting point, Chris. And I think you're right. I think you're on to something there. We we we, sh- we should talk about that because there's a whole there's a whole thing about uh, you know um, uh, empowerment there, isn't there? And and trying to work against the male gaze and and allow people to express themselves the way they want to be seen, you know. And uh, you know, psychology of the selfie, which I think Emma brought us a show some while ago, and we talked about the psychology of the self of the selfie and how that is a way for people to take control and you know the, the, there's a whole the whole bunch of stuff here but there's a very uh, specific set of criteria to like headshots isn't there for actors and things like that don't they have to be well yeah well the the 
it's much more restrictive in terms of passport pictures. I don't know how it is in passport Germany. Passport pictures, Ireland. really. Oh, they, they are, kind of, they are yeah. kind of standardized now. They have you're not these, allowed smile. These, these yeah, you're not allowed that to you have smile. To fit in, so, and the eyes have exactly. to be at a specific level and so on. Yeah, that's, that's right. true. So you try to look like your best when, no, you have to look. <laughs> it's very difficult. Yeah. Or a driver's license. Uh, it's you know, it's unnatural. hit or miss. I mean, yeah. my wife had a driver's license a picture of several years ago, uh, the license before the one she has now. And for some reason, it turned out like a Vogue shot. I mean, it was like <laughs> flat, little, little overexposed, beautifully glowy, uh, whatever it was. And then, of course, I had to get my license renewed. I look like I don't even know what, but um, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I, I to just pull it out. not long ago got my license renewed, and you went in, and it was just basically stare into the webcam. But you didn't, you didn't really know where the webcam even was. So, yeah, and same. then you definitely didn't see what you got it in the mail. You got it back. And you went like horror. Yeah. Ow. Oh my anyway, god. This, make, this makes the UK I lived with seem this quite for ten years. Yeah, this makes the UK <laughs> seem quite advanced. I think I've mentioned this on the show before, but last uh, not so long ago, I had to renew my passport. Uh, and the 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 UK passport now the British passport service they offer a website where you take just a bog standard snapshot on a phone and you upload it to the service and it does all the oh. cropping and positioning for you automatically in That'd the back. That'd be good. Uh, mm. Yeah, I um, like that. Yeah, I like and that, I think yeah. you can do that with driving licenses now because I think they just pull the f same photo that you've done for a passport. They'll just reissue you a driving license as long as you've got a, a, a new enough. With now, actors, that's very it's different. convenient. Here, here in Germany, when it comes to these kind of official document photos, you can't do them anymore yourself now because the, there's some some law that changed, and I think it goes back to well, at least that's the official version of it. That um, there were some cases where people <laughs> would have, sent in face swaps. Well, they took they took their own photo, which I have done several times, and then handed in that photo. And they digitized it and put it in a passport. But um, they they took the photo and then they morphed it into like between two people, and oh. it would be recognized, but for both, and that oh, was wow. apparent oh, wow. apparently too Ooh. dangerous. Because that would undermine the wow, face, face that, recognition. Yeah, 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 so yeah. this goes really deep into face Ooh, recognition, these that, kind of that's things. That's interesting, yeah. I'm and not we, sure you uh, land face recognition in Germany, are you? Uh, yeah, oh, not officially, so uh, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> but um, they, they, they ended up, now you, at least now or pretty soon, you'll have to go to a photographer, to a professional photographer, and they will have special terminals that they cannot tamper with, and then you have to have the photo taken wow. that way. Or you go to the official, uh, I don't know, town hall passport place and uh, have it taken there. But yeah. you, you won't be able to hand your own photo in anymore, which I used to do for years now, but yeah, they're not doing yeah. this. But I mean, with actors, it's different. I mean, if you're ha like, you know, at casting sessions, actors are always like handing you their headshots and on the right. back, it's usually their mm -hmm. CVs. And um, it's very hard to determine, uh, I suspect, uh, it, what kind of presentation you want. Because if you present sort of a neutral, what I would consider a more bland version of your face, I don't really think it, it it's the kind of thing that like will attract casting directors or or uh, or directors and go like oh that energy is what i want <laughs> yeah. but if you're too like if you're a comic actor and you strike a <laughs> weird pose <laughs> yeah. for audio i just made an odd face um, <laughs> the, the the um the response will be in one way pretty good, but then if you're going for a dramatic role, that may not be so good. If you're a stunt person, you want to present kind of strength, action, maybe full body. If you are going for, if you're a model, your headshots are obviously going to be reflective. Um, in in a completely different way, uh, whether is, it, is that that's why you have a portfolio though, presumably. Yes, but you got to get in the door with your portfolio, and you got mm. to get into the casting director's office to audition, and 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 so often a headshot will be one's first foray into just saying here I am, like a business yeah. card, mm. um, and and it will explain my my choice of headshot. 
<laughs> See, that's that's, that's interesting because that 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 sounds special. But then I try and relate that to my professional work, which is very much in in the corporate world, and uh, in in my world. Do you feel uh, pressurized to look a certain way for the intelligent, and oh, okay. dramatic, uh, and responsible? Yes, uh, yes it's, a, it's a good acting job I have to do for that. <laughs> but no, so so this is one of the things I wanted to ch- talk about actually, because in one way you could say uh, that in my world, every every client I bid to every Every job I go for, I have to create a CV or a resume that is focused on that. So if I want to run, you know, uh, a, a cloud-based Internet of Things software development program, right, I have to draw out all the bits of my experience that relate to that. If I want to do something with government work, I will have to do it. You know, do mm. do it. it. It's all very. Um, I mean, it's cut and paste, but but it is specifically drawing out the right things to make to to, to hit the the spot. A bit like maybe a headshot would have to to give you opportunities to hit the right thing. But let's talk about if I could, I'd like to talk about the corporate world a bit because twenty twenty has changed everything. And do I have an expectation now to look and feel a certain way in the corporate world? Well, yes, I do, but it's very very different from what it was a year ago. How? How? Well, so the change has come. Um, and it was literally overnight with lockdown um, because suddenly you went from needing to be professional and, you know, to, to an extent well-groomed and dressed for the part, not dressed identically for every role or whatever, but but, mm. but dressed appropriately for whatever you were trying to do and projecting an, a, a, an appropriate, relatively conservative image of yourself most of the time Um to kids running around screaming in the background of your Zoom calls, right? And that mm. happened overnight and it was okay suddenly. I mean, mm. if you know, a year ago, if somebody had, if I'd been on a video call or, or an audio call and there'd been noise in the background, so that would have been really bad form. Mm. Now it's changed. And, and even in a corporate environment, you know, you have to show person, you know, people are showing more about themselves because you don't get to meet people face to face. You don't get to talk so much. So it's all a lot less formal. It's OK. You know, um, I'm, I'm wearing like a sort of fleecy jumper right this evening. And that's what I wear now to do corporate calls. Don't, don't do- hire him. I'm interviewing people. I'm interviewing people who are going to interviews in just a T-shirt, right? No collar, not even a T-shirt with a collar, right? not even a polo shirt. And that's okay. And people's oh, avatars so are changing. People's av- well, well, Chris, you left the corporate world a long time well, ago. I mean, it has changed a lot. Oh, I, I never and been. I, and, and I still have a pretty good insight into the corporate world through Monica because she Monica, is in the yeah. corporate world and uh, she is in, in her home office and... Um, yeah, I, I hear these stories and I see they're like all of a sudden everyone's holding up their cat in front of the camera. Yeah, in a all business their kids. Meeting, I know? mean, yeah, I introduce my kids to my colleagues, you know, and even to customers sometimes, you know, mm. and just think yeah. that that world has changed. So, so the world of headshots has changed as well, in I, I guess, in the sense that first, first of all, is that um, they are very much more common. So for a long time, you know, uh, all of these conferencing tools that we had available, you know, often you wouldn't use a headshot as an as an avatar, um, or if you did, it would be something that was, you know, was you in a suit and tie or whatever that, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that was an official corporate headshot. Now people are, uh, are much more personable in, in the avatar, uh, more, more about uh, themselves. Also, Adrian, when people are broadcasting news, I mean, here we see it all the time on CNN or MSNBC or mm. any of these where you have on street reporters journalists who are there or broadcasting from their homes stuff is happening in the background mm. uh you have dropouts of sound but it all is forgiven yeah, yeah. absolutely when it feels much more thing. natural yeah. though uh Emer, i have a question for you mm-hmm. it, being that uh, you're um uh, kind of in the uh kind of educational world, uh, at least adjacent. Uh, the the I, I feel that some graduate student uh, should be writing a thesis on, you know, the presentation of self through a headshot uh, aesthetic, you know, Absolutely, that, yeah. that, that seemed, but, you know, I, I'm only half joking about this, but, but I, I think that there is a very interesting for those who are interested in, you know, the, the Susan Sontag drill down intellectual philosophical understanding of photography 
as it has been and how it's evolved. And we can, you know, go to Nadar and start there all the way. And those could be considered portraits, but many of them mm -hmm. were portraits that were commissioned in order for presentation. And if you just track people's presentation through photography uh, for their own agendas, whether mm. they're whether there was sort of myth making, whether there are book jackets, whether they're mm. corporate sponsorship or trying to get a gig with a speech headshots for actors. And they're all just very, very um, tight shots of one's face, but they in embrace a specific aesthetic historically. I think there's really a lot of uh, grist for the mill there to, to really think about how that works. That'd be a fun thing to. to Would it? Yeah, really. Yeah. Good. yeah. I mean, I think there's a coffee yeah. table book there somewhere. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think there's a show yeah, there somewhere mm. as well. I mean, we should, yeah, because everything is so much easier to, to produce now and yeah we'll, we'll get to, to showing some headshots in a minute hopefully and you know and talking about what we've made and you know i found it really i mean it's fun for one thing um and uh, it's a lot easier than i had imagined it would be um and i'm not saying that i would call these artistic self-portraits at least not the ones that i've made but i think there is something about the the coming together as often we say that you know, the availability of, of really sophisticated tools to do these things mm. and and also the cultural changes some of which have been rapidly accelerated through 2020 uh that you know there is a there is a freedom that yeah oh blimey. i mean 20 years ago working in the corporate world i couldn't have believed this stuff would happen and 20 years ago i was working in the thick of the dot-com boom and going to california and stuff like that and mm -hmm. you know and even in those crazy crazy times when there was money just you know <laughs> <laughs> flowing everywhere um you know it still it was it still wasn't like but, it is today but didn't it come from the fact that the private world and the corporate world were kind of strictly two different things for a long time you were people mm. people tended to kind of go to work and wear a mask of some sort um no, certainly certainly i did to a project suit. an image i did mm. the same thing yeah. and i remember distinctly the f uh, I, I worked for like for months with a colleague in colorado and i've never done that no no, Me neither. no. <laughs> never 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 but i I, can't. I did that I and can't. and after the after after a few months i traveled there and we spent a week together and we had a beer together and that brought this whole private side into the corporate world and then it the, everything changed from then on and we yeah. have been forced into that and i think it's a good thing yeah. and i think yeah. you know the merging of these things and and just the ability to have a bit more fun i think it is is great so chris can we have a look at some photos please absolutely here we go okay. and this is your oh, corpor a, corporate head that's a photo of that one. <laughs> there's a guy i want to hire immediately yeah. mm -hmm. so so do you know what right okay so um we'll, we'll put links in the show notes to to these images for those just listening on audio that what we're looking at here is a, a black and white headshot of me and uh it's just me uh, on a black background and so first of all you know first of all uh, this photograph I am now using as an avatar in some of my clients' <laughs> corporate systems. So people who are who are seeing not my video feed, which uh, is is often what we use, of course. You know, uh, when the video is not on, this is the avatar picture mm. that they'd see of me. Um, this was taken uh, on my iPhone. It was taken in portrait mode, and it was taken in the lighting setting called stage light mono. So um, you didn't stand in front of a black background. You had the mm. iPhone no. take care of it. And I didn't even have any special lighting. Um, I mean, you know, I, I wasn't setting up and playing with lights to get this level of uh, th this lighting on me. Um, I think there's you can probably see there's from this there's probably two light sources. Uh, the key light is probably just the stuff that you that people can see that's lighting me right now. If you're watching on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, it's just my general desk setup, which is tweaked a little bit for video but it is just a general desk setup and and the light hitting the side of my face there is probably from the window beside me um, uh, and that's it but i look at this and there are flaws in it and we can i i'll, I'll i won't point those out because you guys can point those out it'd be a good <laughs> test but the you know this the fact that i could do this and this is a selfie as well right that i could take something that looks 
this suitable for corporate use as a selfie? I think, you know, in just basically one click. Um, I think that's amazing. But Adrian, you're talking about the, the, you know, the aesthetic of the actual photographic image. But it, I look at it and I go like, okay, he has a, a sort of a semi-confident smile that's not quite there yet. It's like almost mm -hmm. a, a confident smirk, but he's holding it back. He's hiding something, huh? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> the, the eyes, the, like he knows something that you don't look on the mouth. The eyes are like basically like fuck you i don't need there's, this job <laughs> you know what i mean like give it to me you'll be good uh, don't give it to me there's you know. something to be said about another person taking your shot and helping you kind of judge <laughs> i'm just saying what i'm reading at it. and i'm going like there is a strong sense of confidence uh and and in a way a superiority that's jumping out which i think serves you very well in this particular do you know what you you see a lot more in that than i do but yeah. of course because you're looking at your own yeah you can't judge face. your own your own selfie <laughs> i mean does anybody disagree with my analysis of this picture in general i think it's it... i wouldn't i wouldn't probably i, I don't see a, that clearly an fu in there but um no i don't know the that. eyes the yeah. eyes are like i know what i'm doing yeah. you don't yeah, like that it? is obvious in this photo yeah well that's, that's what yeah. i meant yeah that's yeah. it's, it's an interesting read i'll give you that um, uh, I, it's it's not what was going through my mind um but it but was so that's... so so let's let's pick well let's some of those some of those things that you see in there jeremiah are desirable so that uh, yes no for, i for think it, i think it's a, headshot. it's a successful so headshot a red, yeah a little bit a little bit of confidence is, is necessary yeah not a lot not as, overconfidence so, so jeremiah as, just just uh so, so if you were if you were directing a movie and you needed someone with that kind of a corporate confidence he'd have a chance yeah. in the casting absolutely bring the guy in okay. so him, actually this, here's, here's a good thing so so what role right if this was a headshot that i had i had had done uh, or prepared for particularly for a type of character what what character jeremiah would you cast me as well like i would say no he's not right for the taxi driver for sure <laughs> no he's he's not good not for even the, the de niro taxi driver no the <laughs> salesman <laughs> Uh, I, I I would give him the the part of the high school mathematician who is working his way through the system, but is working on a formula that will change the world. So uh -huh. a wolf in sheep's know. clothing, mad kind of. scientist. I like it. All right, yeah. <laughs> not quite not quite the Einstein here, but okay. So, <laughs> but, so he's trying to right. break through. Okay, so here we, here it is. I'm definitely learning something from this yeah, conversation. Yeah, Einstein, because let's call him that. I'm I'm learning. <laughs> thank you, Chris. I'm I'm learning that actually it's not just about all the tools. I just thought that that was a reasonably <laughs> bland face uh, that that was, you know, neither apologetic nor hopefully too arrogant, and not that it would serious, be perfectly fine to smiley. be looked at less than an inch across on a, <laughs> as an avatar yeah. or, or, on a chat forum in a corporate environment. But, I'm gonna yeah. I'm I'm gonna post at some point maybe on Discord some reviews from a, a show I did in literally 1976, <laughs> which was large yeah, format boring. portraits of of artists, all shot on four by fives and eight by tens, and and in my studio at that time, as a young photographer, I I tried to get all my subjects to have absolutely no expression whatsoever like to project nothing uh -huh. and i succeeded because all the reviews were like these pictures don't reveal anything <laughs> about all, your, all the subjects and i, I actually I've, I've been going through my storage and archives as one does in a pandemic uh, and found these reviews of that show of that, that particular show and I'll, I'll post them because they're they're quite funny. And a sample from the show, which, by the way, has just gone to Berlin. Three of those portraits have just gone to Berlin um, to be in another show uh, with uh, an art group that used to be known as General Idea and Conceptual Interesting. Work. Interesting. 
And, oh, very uh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so I've I've learned something from this headshot exercise. Then, so yes, uh, it's not all about being able to take a technically proficient or, or almost technically proficient selfie on your phone to use that. You have to be mindful of what your expression says about you as well. True. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who um, wants to go next through the Jeremiah <laughs> creature? Well, I can, if you if before you put mine up uh, and don't, don't necessarily put mine up next, I, I just yeah. want to give it a little bit of a preface intro. Okay. Okay, no, no, no. Next one is Imar's um, Good. first headshot. Not a corporate <laughs> one, but um, no. I suppose that's your son? I, That's my son. I, I'm not good at portraits. I don't do portraits, really. Um, and this one in particular, he's very hard to get a photo of. So um, So what did you do to yeah. get a photo of him? I, ju well, I asked him <laughs> and I said, I need you to do this for me. So he had to do it. And he was like, what do you want me to do? So I just got him at, at the point where I kind of tried to make him smile because he's very serious and teenager like mm -hmm. most uh -huh. of the time. So this, I think, just captures in the moment when I got a smile out of him. <laughs> OK, so, uh, so is that, yeah, is that like what, one of those where... You know what? That is just taken on the phone by the window um, and it's in... I think noir filter from the iPhone camera. That's it. Nothing else. There you go. That's all it takes. So he, it is he, easy. He's 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 thinking. God, I am so looking forward to being brooding again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is making me so happy that in a moment uh, I'm going to go back to well, being solid. I don't think you can tell that <laughs> yeah. from the photo. Yeah. No, no, I'm just joking. No, he looks very happy to me. You see, that's the thing. He pretends that he's looks unhappy, joyful. but really he's not. He's very happy. Yeah. No, he looks very Why joyful. He be? I'm his mother. Looks <laughs> genuinely joyful in this I, picture. I imagine, yeah, yeah, I imagine yeah. him great. looking outside and there's a, um, he's probably at a the sea somewhere looking out at ships going by something like oh, that that's good that's, yeah that's what comes up in my mind i yeah. sent it to him straight after just to kind of prove to him that look look how lovely you look when you smile <laughs> 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 he didn't he didn't appreciate that yeah <laughs> I think it. I think it works great. I mean, yeah, having it by the the window is great. Yeah, the the light on his face is fantastic. The yeah, he's he's clearly he, he doesn't seem to be thinking any dark thoughts. So I wouldn't I would <laughs> no. I wouldn't listen to Jeremiah's over interpretation of it. I think <laughs> either Jeremiah is just making stuff up, or I'm very shallow and I just don't see things that other people see. But there you go. Also, you just forget, like you know, time goes past, and actually, he's been in teenage mode for such a long time now. He's almost seventeen, uh. and I'm thinking to me, it, this reminds me of when he was smaller <laughs> and less, you know, self-conscious. And it's tough to be 17 free. during it's a pandemic. Oh, yes. 17. Yeah. yeah, in general. But anyway, yeah. this even worse. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, yeah. OK, so like that's... Adrian said, I mean, the tools, I, I mean, I don't. That was very, very quickly done. As I said there, I avoided the headshot aspect. Uh, in favor of the night shots. Uh, but then, so, but but then you just you just kept going and you submitted another one. I just kept going. <laughs> she looks so much like because you. Because everyone says that, yeah. <laughs> so does. yeah, she of course you know had to get in on the action, and um, she's just m much more happy to be photographed. But same room, same window. Um, That's beautiful, beautiful shot. Head. I love the light on beautiful this one. Shot. Uh, the, the me other too, one, me let, too. Let's, Rapper let's have a quick light. comparison. You included the window here and you didn't on this one. Yeah. Well, that changes a yeah. few things for me. It does, it does doesn't me it? Too. It has more of a painterly quality. For mm. those uh, listening on audio. <laughs> yeah, there's a link in the show notes. And you, yeah, you'll have to probably check these out one because too. they're, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, it's just us rambling about things that you're not seeing. So, uh, but it's a beautiful yeah. photo, black and white photograph with a lot of rich tonality of a uh, real genuine uh, kid. How old is she? Like She's nine or something? Ten. Yeah. Oh, close. Yeah. Ten going on eleven. Um, um, that's her. Oh, well. <laughs> so <laughs> incredulous face. Oh my God, mother, stop embarrassing me. No, because she's just getting to that sort of preteen kind of attitude oh, yeah. it, 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 it looks great and can i can i ask how you Oops. you made that as well because jeremiah said about tonality and actually there there is a there's, there's a fantastic tonality exactly to the same exactly the same oh, way okay. it's just portrait mode again right. but um i think um 
it, it's not the noir filter. It's just the the neutral, the black and white neutral. Ah, one. Okay, yeah. that makes it in color. less contrasty then. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's a bit yeah. a bit gentler on the contrast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very I like nice. it. The, the placement, nice. everything is that's a, that's a really good headshot. It yeah, feels like, like you actually. captured a, a, just a, a moment here that just a, this wonderful moment of her turning towards you. And I did. There were several <laughs> for both of them, and I just picked the, I picked the bet the you know my favorite ones from the set because obviously yeah. we had some kind of giggles and stuff sure. like that as well. And some there of them. could be some eye rolling in this. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, exactly. after. That's <laughs> just pre eye roll. <laughs> right. Pre- if it was my daughter, sort of there'd definitely going, be a load of eye roll. Having brought up twin girls, I, I know the vibe very, very well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Lovely. Right. Okay. I'll Thanks. take I'll take the next one. Um, sure. That is my corporate in air quotes corporate shot. Um, <laughs> That's and cool. So, it's like, when is this meeting going to end? No, no, it's not. It's not. It's me. It's me using. OK, so I'm I'm firmly rooted in the Apple universe. And that means mm-hmm. I have an iPhone. I have an Apple Watch. And uh, that is me using the Apple Watch as the remote for the camera. So I have Lovely. the iPhone set up uh, with a little like gooseneck thing. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm using the watch. And I, I, I like to include hints at how the sausage is made. And this is one of those where uh-huh. um, you can see me take the photo. T- t- takes it like a f- split second later, so my finger's not on the display anymore. But <coughs> I'm looking at the preview on a display, and I'm deliberately pulling that kind of a face, being very thoughtful. So, so it's, it's kind of a meta, self-referential kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It looks right. very, uh-huh. very serious, though. Mm. Yes, I know. Mm. That was That was kind <laughs> of on purpose. Do, t- tell me, Chris, is is this cropped? Because I really like that. I really like the crop of it. Mm. Did you did you set that up in camera? Or no, yes, I, I, is, this is it in camera. You did up? This is straight out of camera. Right, so that's in the port. That's it's on impressive. portrait mode, and I did um, switch it to black and white in post. Yeah, so that's you. you you've mm. definitely yeah yeah. There's there's no. Um, I just it feels you feel the frame really well mm. there. It's just, it's just, just the, the yeah with the with the bottom right hand mm. corner which, with your wrist with the watch mm. and 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 uh, a lot of the rest of the frame be, being your face, uh, mm. but just a little bit of space on the right hand side there. I don't know. It just there's a di- it feels it draws a diagonal across mm. the frame for me. I, I I do like the composition of that. Yeah. And, and did you did you frame that on your watch? Did, were you using the viewfinder not really. on your watch to not frame really. it? No, okay. Not really. So okay. so the okay. So the background story is I I did want to project that kind of a seriousness more, not a seriousness, more of a concentratedness. You know, I was like doing something concentrated on that watch, and um, of course it's it's a headshot. So I was I wanted to project that, and I took seven or eight photos with different kinds of framings and things. So this mm-hmm. is not like a one so- one off. It's, it's uh, a whole bunch of photos with different kinds of framings. And um, holding the watch up this high is very unnatural. It's like mm-hmm. almost yeah, in front I of the imagine. face. So so I, yeah. I had to make sure it's in the frame. So the picture actually works. Yeah, mm. so at the background. Yeah, oh, that's good. That is okay. good. Really Can good. you shoot multiples? I mean, like. Uh, uh, oh, you mean watch. hold it and then it keeps uh, repeating? Yeah. Yeah. I, probably. I don't know. I haven't tried. You yeah. can do on well, the phone, but I would think so. But you can do that on a watch too. I should try that. And are you looking at the phone to position yourself? And that's just the, the shutter release? Um, or are you looking at the screen of the watch to the, frame The, the watch also shows you the preview, but it's okay. very small. But um, I, I framed it on the phone, and then I looked at the watch, and I just moved it a little bit. Okay, okay. Yeah. Cool. It, is, it is interesting. Imagine mm. a world where you could actually have a view from your camera show on your wristwatch and then it's, use that as a remote shutter. Imagine if we lived in that world. <laughs> it's Dick Tracy. <laughs> it does sort of look like someone else took it, though, doesn't it? I mean, if you does. were to look at it, yeah. you wouldn't it think does. it was... Yeah, it feels That's very true. objective yeah. shot. That's a good mm. point. Really, really... Good uh, point. And it is so. very Dick Tracy, especially yeah. when the phone calls come actually come through on your watch. Oh, I, you know, <laughs> you know what? I, I rarely use the watch to take phone calls, but once I had to because I was I, in the kitchen cooking and I had pots and things and all the hands were busy. And then my mom called and I I accepted it with my nose on the, <laughs> on the watch. And then I talked to my mom while juggling things. 
So yeah, it does work. It yeah. sounds very, very good too. Yeah, it sounds great. So next one cool. would be Jeremiah's. So if I was, uh, let's just say, an animal trainer, <laughs> which I am not, and I wanted Apart from that squirrel. This one is a superstar. So wait a second, and I wanted to get my one of my animals in a movie that was casting for squirrels, for example. <laughs> um, I would need to project, like a stunt person, or whatnot, a, a, mm -hmm. a photograph of my squirrel. <laughs> or, oh, is uh, it, uh, did I guess right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that gave the casting director and director and producers confidence that this squirrel would be the right squirrel for my <laughs> show. So mm -hmm. let me bring uh -huh. it up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> There's this this, yeah. So, you know, there's confidence there. There's an openness there. There is. There, he's like in a karate kid stance. He is. As well. He's an action, <laughs> uh, definitely an action based, but he's there posing rather nicely. And uh, <laughs> um, just so everybody knows, this, this wasn't grabbed. Uh, you know, I, I actually, this was a series, and um, uh -huh. he's very, very easy or she is very, very easy to uh, keep in place because uh, all she has to know is you got some nuts around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll work she, for food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'll not move. I will do basically whatever. You could totally be making money with this squirrel, couldn't you? Oh, absolutely. This squirrel. So compliant. I, so uh, it's unbelievable. Superstar. I've is, known this squirrel for <laughs> several years. So. Is that a fresh shot or is that a one you, you took? You, 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 no, you no, took fresh shot, fresh shot. no, no, fresh shot. No, no, fresh shot. I love yeah. the backdrop. I love the tiles, yeah. The tiles, yeah, that, whatever that is. Um, it is a table made of uh, concrete, <laughs> um, white and concrete sort of brick okay. brick color right. that's uh, outside. And w you, you need four people to move <laughs> it. Cool, yeah, it's extremely heavy and it's, it's a... Uh, Anyway. I even like this, whatever the dish is in the background. That, it's which, a globe. It's a, it's a, a globe, light, okay. actually. It's a it, uh, it, round it, globe. First of all, I thought, oh, what's that distracting rubbish in the background? But then on the <laughs> other hand, it adds this... <laughs> Um, it adds this yeah. curvy nature, this curvy element to the photo where well, like everything it, else yeah. is straight lines. Well, it, yeah, contrasted the thing. And, I, you yeah. know, I, I, for some reason, I left the chair bottom rubber thing. Yeah, right that's the only one there. thing I would probably The change, flaw, but. but only Allah is perfect. So the, I left the flaw <laughs> in, so. <laughs> so I can, I can definitely see this squirrel going for the next Karate Kid movie. <laughs> totally. yeah. I could mm. I, the, I could easily see I him as being a bad guy in the film. next Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I think this this girl's got a future in mm, film. Sure. Should she want to go there? <laughs> yeah, so straight, that's my that's straight my to headshot. HBO, straight to HBO Max, though. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> my, but the point is, you know, headshots have to serve a specific purpose yeah. and that's why i yeah. wanted to kind of and you and came up uh, with a really nice story around the photo but i'm pretty sure you took the photo first and then came up with the story i did but i did direct <laughs> a film as y you know that had a squirrel featured so i've been <laughs> through <laughs> casting squirrels so just to tap my own horn here um this is not like the separation is yep. not as great as one might think that's uh <laughs> It's good. It's fun. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. And you know, if if a squirrel can put up a different headshot for every movie it's going for, <laughs> then 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 truly, truly, the future of photography is here. <laughs> you have to get working on her portfolio now. Oh, yeah, right there. Believe me. So, um, <laughs> counting counting the amount of photos, the number of photos, we should theoretically be at the end. But there's one more, um, which uh, Imar submitted. <laughs> and yeah it's another yeah. headshot which doesn't really i mean you really Technically have to look it's a headshot. my head is in it if you look close enough but yeah. um i was so proud of my tree that i i decided i wanted to take photos ah. and it was meant to be an, a night shot but it's so bright that it, it's not really but it turned out to be an accidental headshot so i claim it for a headshot yeah, yeah. there you go yes. i would use that for a profile picture <laughs> <laughs> i think it tells you a lot 
<laughs> She's mad. <laughs> Wonderful. She, she, she's so. reflective. She's reflective. Christmas mad. <laughs> very. Yeah, it's a it's a, a seasonal photo, definitely. Mm. It is. Yes. Very. Right. Mm. So we have reached the place in our show where we want to go and have a look at our. I'm just, I'm just stalling because I need to change the setup of. Well, it's picks of the week time, isn't it? Oh, yeah. so yeah. I'll, I'll take yeah. over. I'll take over while you sort out the tech, then, Chris. Mm. It's um, it's pick of the week time, and uh, yeah, I th- I've in- I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation through the world of headshots. I think that's been a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has. So, who have you got up first on the pick of the week? Um, Chris? You, <clears throat> yours is the first Me. one. I'll have it up in a second. You can start talking. That's okay. Okay, so I've talked a little bit today about the process that I. I went through to make the headshot that I shared and that was using the standard Apple camera app and the editing features that exist within that these days. Um, so and that's great, uh, although it doesn't give you the most control ever. Um, it does make sure that it, is, it makes it easy and quick. Um, we didn't get to the point of picking up the uh, the technical challenges with my headshot because we were too busy looking at my personality disorders. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but uh, the the eagle eyed amongst you, or you can go back and look at it. You might notice that my ear is out of focus yeah. and the lighting isn't always even everywhere and stuff like that. And yeah, so so my pick of the week is is an app called Focus, uh, which we have mentioned before. Um, but there are two tools that I would like to mention in focus um which are just just the concept of them is out of this world right the first one uh is uh that what's known as the patch tool um, which allows you to paint the depth map in false mm. color so you can fix any issues with the depth map that comes from the image that the cameras take and this is not just um uh, this is not just the apple camera app focus has a camera in it as well um and anything that come anything that can generate a depth map then uh, in the right format then focus can edit the the map itself and the second one um is is i just find astonishing um it'll project your 3d photo your portrait mode photo into a 3d space and it allows you to play with the depth of field and you can set both the front point and the back point of the depth of field right and you just move it we're dragging sliders along and you can see the impact it has on a 3d projection of, of the image you can see you know uh, have i got my ear in focus or have i not or, or whatever have i got my nose in focus or have i not and i think that's just astonishing and you can move this 3d f- projection around and you can change the angles of it and you can do all sorts of stuff and set exactly the precise depth of field you want and i just think that's astonishing so that's my pick of the week there you go um yeah i love focus there's just so much to play in it um i've spent way too much time playing with things (laughs) (laughs) Uh, my pick of the week i've got it let me bring mine up and that is um one of my new toys and that is the new macbook air which is um Mm. uh, the, the new m1 processor that Apple puts in their new laptops, and I, I can't tell you how how happy I am that this thing is here because I used to I used to have a, a MacBook Pro for two years, which I sold used now uh, to finance this one. But it really changes a few things, and um, I don't think it's overhyped to be honest because it's fast, it's quick, it's 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 you never have to wait for it uh, for regular things. And uh, the one thing I love about it most is that they brought the old keyboard back. So, I, well, I'm I, I could not be more excited. I write a lot, oh. and writing on the clacky 2018 MacBook Pro keyboard was so jarring. And now it's back to how it <laughs> felt before, and that is really see. A I, I I I think this looks really exciting because it's very tempting. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, I mean, I I use uh, an iPad Pro for a lot of my 
for, for video and photo work because it just works right whereas my old macbook doesn't work very well anymore although i have a very old macbook at this mm. point um the idea that you know all of this is optimized i think yeah i, I think is really really clever um and it's and almost an time. ipad it's almost an ipad <laughs> mm -hmm. well you know it can but dream <laughs> Does, tell me, Chris, though, because you've loved for years, you've loved your little 11 inch MacBook Air from about 2013. And I, and I know you that because I've seen you with it and we have one in our house as well, which is still awesome. Mm -hmm. um, is that still with you or is the M1 going to replace that? Oh, no, no, the, the 11 isn't here, hasn't been here for years. But um, if this was oh, available okay. in 11, I would have gone for the 11 again. So... Anyway, well, I'm excited, Chris. Uh, I'm excited because uh, yesterday afternoon I unboxed my Mac Mini, and Ooh. I ah. just I plugged <laughs> it in. I have not put anything on it, and mm -hmm. I'm about to plunge in this morning uh, yep. and set it up. You'll, you'll enjoy that it. That sounds like a so nice Saturday, I'm, Jeremiah. It has like... this this tiny thing, and this is the base model. Okay, there's nothing. Not even memory yeah. added, nothing. It outperforms my Mac, iMac Pro in several respects. Not everywhere, oh, but in, in quite a few respects, it outperforms it. I could probably be, I could probably produce this show on that little laptop. Yeah. And it's just well, mind blowing. I, yeah. I'm excited because I got a loaded mini to run a heavily GPU. There you um, go. You will, you will be, you will I'm, be more than happy with it for sure. I hope so. Okay, enough Apple mm. adver advertisement. Um, next <laughs> one is Jeremiah's pick of the week. Well, um, there's a. Uh, I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but this is a um, portrait, completely let false. Me, let me there's nothing, it. nothing real about this there we headshot. Go at all just this one portrait is what you what you're picking yeah i just as an example of daniel mm -hmm. wallace's work he does quite a lot of of uh constructed um cg work and um i i just thought since we were talking about headshots oh yeah and we we're you know mm. I, I i thought this would be a very interesting um example of um how both exciting and frightening <laughs> uh, I think I can be. And it's We've in a, and it's in a fake before. analog kind of um, yes. Yes, frame so as well. Yeah. 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 Um, I think this is really so interesting, is especially taking, when you look at the whole portfolio. Is he taking um, different pieces from different images and no. mashing them all? He's constructing these it. Are, in... Yeah, these are all built in um, a variety, I, I suspect, wow. a variety of um, applications. Mm. Um, and so it's, know, it's that... not it's not one of these AI generated people no. algorithmic. He's 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 building them from. I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I don't know enough about his technique, but okay. I know he works with uh, a lot of computing power. Uh, it's a little creepy. It's creepy. Yeah. It's, it, there's, is there's it an creepy? Uncanny email? Valley thing about this. Uncanny Valley. That's yeah. that's precisely. If you look at the eyes, there's mm. a certain. Dead quality. Uh, certainly not eyes. quite a life uh, quality to it. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 It contrasts that, that... with Adrian's headshot <laughs> <laughs> nicely. So that's that's interesting because you wonder what you his did. motivation is. That's a bit creepy. What's his motivation? Uh, well, when you look at the body of his work, there, uh, there. Um, I must. <laughs> it's pretty no, pretty amazing mm. stuff because, mm. you know, the more the more you you kind of. Uh, drill down on this, uh, the more you realize that um, what is possible with so-called photography or constructive photography, um, AI, how, however you want to couch it, that the possibilities uh, artistically are. Now, this one is, I mean, you would look at that. And there's no way you would you would say that's fake just from a, a casual glance. And he, his work on the lighting is particularly good, I think, here. Does your neck mm. look really weird? Yeah, <laughs> everything seems me? so perfect. Um, <laughs> Oh, no. It is. It is. It is interesting for me. It it didn't necessarily trigger the uncanny valley response. Mm. It sort of 
it, for me, the, the, it, it comes across a bit more realistic than that. Um, so I think yeah, it's a it's very sophisticated work, and yeah, everybody who's li- listening to this should follow the link in the show notes because there's there's food for thought there. Definitely, mm. it's a good pick of the I week. Think, uh, I think I think also we 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 all kind of respond differently in terms of that uncanny valley response. I don't think everyone has the mm. same responses there. Mm. Yeah, I mean, do you remember a show? Uh, it's a British show about. Um, a family that orders uh, ro- a robot um, as housekeeper. Was that? Uh, uh, yes, was com- I do. Ro- wasn't, it was that Robin Williams? Williams? No. No, 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 no. This is a television no, no. series. Really it creepy. Was a, it really... was just a few years ago. It had. Yeah. Uh, it was Carrie Ann Moss was in it, and uh, some other. It was. A, it was a sort of transatlantic production. What was interesting is the um, the you know the woman who played the robot. You know they really worked very hard at kind of creating a neo-human humanoid mm. look mm. where there was she, very she, little projected. yes she's also in crazy rich asians is that um, yes I heard ah. that. which which is a movie it's just uh, I, see that? I, I, I watched not so long ago and it's just a crazy crazy movie um <laughs> there's no clue in the title i guess mm. um uh but she yes uh, she she did have um that she, quality yeah mm. Okay. Well cast. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Last but not least, Imar, your pick of the week is from the Irish this Examiner. This is, yeah, it's just about a book. This girl, uh, Ruth Medjber, she's a kind of an event photographer. But during the lockdown back in March, I think, I know loads of people have done it, but she started going around taking photos of people, twilight photos of people through their windows and um, she's made with, it into With the a people's book. permission, I, I have to say. Oh, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, her, she started with her neighbours and friends and it kind of grew. So she's turned it into a book and it's, it's a beautiful production of a book and it's been released for Christmas. Now, it's, it's maybe a bit Ireland centric, but it'd be a lovely gift for um, anybody who's into photography. It's a lovely very, idea. It's a very, it's very poignant. It's, it's a book of the time. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's all over um, uh, Twitter and um, she's really active on there and she's she put some good stuff up. So, yeah, yeah, she's definitely worth checking out. But that book is lovely and it's out for Christmas if anybody is looking for a nice Are party. those people mostly her friends? Because I, I'm just wondering how would you react if someone knocked on your window and asked you, if they could have taken a picture. A lot of, of you them would have night. been the people on her street. You know that whole sort of neighborliness that grew up around yeah. um, kind of lockdowns and people, like I think people in cities especially found that um, they didn't know anybody on their street and then all of a sudden they did. Um, mm-hmm. They kind of knew everybody. So I think it was kind of a response to that because um, she would very much be um, Dublin kind of city center so not not suburbs it's more the kind of the town side of it but um uh, i suppose she just met loads of people and you know just now there's people that she knows that she didn't know before this i think it's just kind of poignant and all the different stories of the different people and just you know the window into somebody's life is mm-hmm. How do you? Yeah. Uh, how do you I think pres- it's really, it's really interesting and 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 graphically. I love you know, it. V- very, very appealing as as well. How do you yeah. pronounce it that? Reminds me of. I oh. think it's Medjber. No, I'm not like sure. Grasa. Oh, Grasavalia. That's how I like love at home. Grasavalia. Yeah. Grasavalia. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Now it it kind of reminded me a bit of um, not not aesthetically, but of the the impact on people that the Humans of New York project had. Mm. It, uh, you yeah. know, that the, there was suddenly there was a connection between people that yeah. wouldn't be connected. He's got a new book called yeah, Humans. Yeah. Just a big mm. continuing no, that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right. Anyway. Well, I think we've reached. Okay. Another. We've reached our. Con- our we've reached another conclusion of the episode. We're are we are we going to look at other photos next week? Is that what we're doing? Night, Probably. Night. Yes. Night, night photos. Yes. Night or night, night photos. Mode okay, photos. Okay, that's something night, to look yeah, forward to. Yeah. Um, if you want to get in touch, we are on the Twitters and on the Instas at TFOP now. We have our Discord, which we keep. Uh, raving about because it's such a great place to exchange uh, your your yeah, your thoughts and um, interact with us. Um, that is on the screen and in the description of the show. And of course, we are at thefutureofphotography.com and in your 
podcast client of choice. And uh, with that, thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll be back in a week from now. Until then, take care and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.